Right. Trump defies impeachment circus and tells Democrats to shove it. This is Dr. Stephen Turley's video. Uh, this is a great video of him talking about uh, what Trump did. And this is Catania Alvin speaking now from Ringwood in Hampshire, the New Forest, which William the Conqueror <laughs> created when he came over and conquered England. From uh, He sailed over from Barfleur uh, many, many years ago. And uh, so I'm no longer two and a half miles from the infamous city of London. I'm now in the wonderful New Forest. Here we go. President Trump defies Nancy Pelosi's impeachment circus and tells the Democrats to shove it. That's to be talking about on today's video. I don't know how many of you heard about the eight-page eight page letter that Trump's legal team sent out to Speaker Pelosi and top Democrats the other day. It was brutal. I mean, brutal. They're not playing games, and they're certainly not going to be participating in the Democrats' impeachment circus that seems to be entertaining only two groups of people, either rabid you know, left-wing liberals or your corporatist globalist media, you know, your neo-Marxist media, which shouldn't surprise us since, after all, the two of them end up being one. So we're going to take a look at this go shove it letter and analyze the strategy that Trump is using here. And we're going to see precisely why his strategy is so brilliant and perfect for successful 2020. But first, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsors for this video. And that's our good friends at My Patriot Supply. My Patriot Supply food kits last up to 25 years in storage and they include breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And if you act now, you'll save $70 on a two-week emergency food kit when you go to my special website by clicking on the link below. Now, this is a limited-time offer. Do not wait until an emergency happens before you respond to one. Take action by clicking on that link below. Save $70 with your two-week emergency food kit. Okay. Now, I, I keep that going because, you know, when I use people's videos, and I think it's very important, I share their message as well. Okay, which helps them survive. So now we're going to hear his full version of the eight page letter. Now, also, over this period of time, I've just caught a glimpse of Boris Johnson and the letter that he put out, which is great. I'm going to do another video of that. So both men are speaking their truth. Time to speak the truth, guys. Then, president Trump is showing himself to be that kind of president no party, no party, let alone the Democrats, has ever dealt with before, okay? And we'll get into this in a moment, but one of the key characteristics of the new populism that's emerging all over the world is that its leaders, the leaders of the new populist movement, they're utterly fearless. They're brazenly bold and daring and valiant against the corporatist globalist monopoly that's doing everything it possibly can to hold on to power in the midst of this nationalist populist uprising. And so the, this is a very, a very important point because think about I'm 80. I was born in 1939. Um, Trump, Trump is 77. So he's he was born in 19, 1944, 1943. 19, there is a period of time astrologically uh, certainly 1939 is in it and I think it goes through to maybe 46 whereby during those years we had uh, Uranus very strongly in our charts and I think also Pluto I certainly have in mind and Uranus is the planet of revolution and also of freedom so the people who have risen to power or in in or grown and come, they are freedom lover people. Now, Boris Johnson is not of that age. So it's very interesting. There is a passion for freedom to overcome the globalists and the banking, evil, evil banking system made by evil thinking people. Okay, over many years, not just once now, right from Seven, 1694 when the Bank of England was set up intentionally to destroy America. Here we go again. 
President Trump is responding to this impeachment circus, this kabuki theater that's being staged and commented on by our WWE commentators, the neo-Marxist news media that pretends every single day, they pretend, they act as if these impeachment hearings were justified and noble and virtuous expressions of justice. President Trump tweeted, uh, tweeted out, Tr President Trump sent out an eight-page letter to top Democrats and Nancy, the, 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 the impeachment Pelosi. I mean, Nancy Pelosi is one of your top Democrats. You're, you're in trouble, man. But the letter could not be more clear or defiant. The letter made it unequivocally clear that the White House will not participate in what they're calling the Democrats' illegitimate and unconstitutional impeachment inquiry. These so-called proceedings have run roughshod over congressional norms and the president's due process rights. Fox News is actually coming out and saying it's probably the most historic letter the White House has ever sent. It was a clear and unabashed throwdown to the Democrats that they know where they can shove all the subpoenas that have been flying out of their committees. Here's a, here's a bit of an excerpt from the letter. President Trump and his administration reject your baseless, unconstitutional efforts to overturn the democratic process. Your unprecedented actions have left the president with no choice. In order to fulfill his duties to the American people, the Constitution, the executive branch, and all future occupants of the office of the presidency, President Trump and his administration cannot participate in your partisan and unconstitutional inquiry under these circumstances. And then it, uh, it concludes with this. The president has a country to lead. The American people elected him to do this job, and he remains focused on fulfilling his promises to the American people. Now, that last phrase is key here, right? What Trump is doing is he's setting up a battle, the impeachment battle, between the American people. It's so important to get the people. He's brilliantly setting up the impeachment battle as a battle between the people versus politicians. It's absolutely essential to get, right? The people versus politicians. And the, pe the people are being represented for the very first time by a bona fide non-politician. Exactly. Now, I wish that the so many people in Britain would actually stop watching the propaganda media and actually start watching people like Dr. Steve Turley on the YouTubes and watching many other people who are actually presenting President Donald Trump in the incredibly positive light that he is genuinely leading the people. Very important. Trump is not a politician disguising himself as one of the people. He's a real populist. Trump never held elected office before being elected president. Right? You know who gets this, interestingly, is Mark Cuban, you know, the TV show Shark Tank, owner of the Dallas Mavericks. Cuban gets this. He was recently interviewed, I believe it was on CNBC, and he was asked which of the Democratic candidates did he think could be Trump. And Cuba was pretty straightforward with his answer. He said, none of them. None of them can. Um, which, of course, what we've been saying on this channel all along. But no, none of them. But the reason he gave was very, very good. Uh, good. Uh, Cuban's an astute guy. Cuban argued that the reason Trump won in 016 was precisely because he wasn't a politician. Exactly. Because the majority of politicians, the majority of politicians have been been following this the the thinking the stinking thinking that they can lie with impunity they can smile as they lie through their teeth they can do anything they like and part of this is because they've got a huge amount of money already as soon as they become um, elected as a politician they are bought by the Vatican. Here you'll see Restored Republic via the GCR as of October the 10th, 2019. And uh, here they've got the magnificent um, painting of um, going across the Hudson Bay. 
that was many many years ago so when I go down here round about there right here it's um since the end of World War two these horrendous exploitations of innocent children this is about the um, heinous crimes of sexual crimes against very small and young children um, has been run by the CIA US Inc the British Crown Vatican International child sex exploitation human trafficking drug and gun running rings known as the cabal they have control of the US and well I would say it's on the verge of changing they have control of the US and world monetary systems that were funded out of the US taxpayer dollars through a CIA black budget and the central banking system with their nefarious activities enforced by various mafias. Now these inhuman global elites use their addiction to paedophilia and child sacrifice by blackmailing politicians and influence political arenas in order to gain power of their own monetary gain. Right, this is further, slightly further up. So it's under F, an international child sex trafficking. And it talks here about the politicians, their own elections, because remember Stephen Turley talked about politicians and that Trump is not a politician. Upon their own election, US politicians were given special privileges by the cabal, including well-funded individual accounts at the Vatican Bank, plus at certain critical points, secret invitations to paedophilia parties and child sacrifices, kickbacks, payoffs, and recordings of these caught in money laundering and paedophilia have been used to blackmail global elites and politicians into doing the cabal's bidding. Right, so guess who? It's very likely are fighting for their lives and that's Pelosi and the Democratic Party, in this case in, in America. Directly after the inauguration, President Trump hired US Attorney General from Utah, John Hubar, and 740 investigators to investigate the goings on in Washington, D.C. They did, and they have filed over 125,000 sealed indictments against political and global elites in federal courts across the nation since Trump took office. They have used testimonies and made deals with the lower echelons to gain evidence on the bigwigs, all a part of the awaiting mass arrests between now and through December 2019. And maybe the world will get an amazing Christmas present. And just at the top here, the international child sex trafficking. January 2016, the morning of the inauguration, Donald Trump's first official act was to visit CIA headquarters and declare a war on child sex trafficking. President Trump was well informed on the dark, well-kept secrets that gave power to the cabal, the cabal US Inc and a CIA black budget funded out of US taxpayers dollars, international child sex trafficking, drug and gun running rings, with profits going to individuals secret accounts at the Vatican Bank. Well, I think that that's probably all we have time for. So this whole thing is coming down this whole thing and President Trump is directly directly in leading to rid the world of these evil satanic beings who were 
also pushing to create a one world satanic order of which in my knowledge the European Union is the center core of. Is Catania Alvin signing out. Have a great day. Bye bye from the New Forest in England. And just to add, God bless and we are being looked after. So trust, trust, trust and stay in joy. <laughs>